Hey, you ever lose a fish after a water change? That's one of the things I hear the most from people that write to me. Look at that, it's about, that's about a month, month of gunk. I also have some filters in here. Filter media that I keep seated in case I need to fire up, fire up a, uh, a filter right away. Anyway, uh, one of the most common things I hear is uh, I did a water change and now my fish are hanging out at the top, they're not swimming right, they don't look right, Something, something's wrong. You know, there's, there's some obvious things, right? Like maybe, maybe the, the temperature wasn't right, maybe you didn't match the temperature when you filled the tank, right? And so it gave them a little bit of a shock. Uh, maybe something changed in the oxygen in the aquarium, maybe because uh, it was sitting for a while and, and maybe they, there was too much uh, loss of oxygen, and then maybe when you put it back together, you were not breaking up the surface the way you were. Uh, that's a possibility. Maybe you didn't dose. Maybe you didn't dose the, uh, the aquarium correctly when you were filling it up, and now the, the fish are reacting to the chloramine or the chlorine or ammonia. Who knows what you've got in your water, right? So there could be a variety of factors, but one thing to consider is this: some of you will hold off on a water change. Some of you will, will wait a while and then think, it's been a while, let me do a big one. And that actually could be what's going on, and I'll tell you why. If your tank is, is uh, going for a long period of time between water changes, chances are is, is that the, the, the accumulation of nitric acid, nitrites, right, is is actually lowering that, that pH. And the minerals that are suspended in the aquarium tend to kind of settle on the bottom. So buffering really becomes less and less. And now you come along and you throw 90% fresh water in there. Because you waited a long time, the pH shifted from the way it came from the tap last time you filled it right? Maybe you filled it and it was 7, 7, 8, 7 8. It's been sitting for a long time and now it's, you know, now the fish have been living in water that gradually changed to about 7, 4, 7, 5. And now you hit it with a big dose, 90% dose of 7, 8. And 7, 8 is a big difference. And you may have shocked your fish. And that pH shock can be very hard on them if and sometimes fatal, right? So they start acting weird. So if you've waited a long time between water changes, you, you might want to consider doing a couple smaller water changes. So where you would normally do, let's say, a 90% water change in a week, an 80%, 70%, maybe do a couple, eh, maybe do a couple 10, 20 percenters, and, and then beginning of the following week, go ahead and do your 50, 60 percenter. So do a, do a gradual increase of that pH so that you don't shock the fish. Because I know, I know you're trying to do the right thing, and how many times in trying to do the right thing have we killed our fish? From the new fish keeper who, who cleans, over cleans the aquarium and kills all the beneficial bacteria, right, and, and ends up killing his fish with an ammonia spike, uh, all the way up to the more advanced fish keeper who is doing a very large water change after not doing any water changes for six weeks to two months and there's an abrupt change in pH that kills the fish. So just something to keep in mind, keep in mind. Now it's not going to be that much of an issue in an aquarium like this one where, where you have a lot of plants and the plants are helping with the, uh, the controlling of, of, of nitrites, you know, it's, it's, it's absorbing ammonia and and helping that the plants are, are 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 carrying some of the load in this aquarium, so it's not so much. But in in the in the other types of aquariums, like my large cichlid tanks, where I don't have plants because the fish destroy them, those are the tanks where I normally will do the the larger water changes because there's nothing in there helping to absorb nitrates, right? So the nitrates can get high, and those are the tanks where I risk shocking the fish if I've gone too long between water changes. Now, normally I do a water change every week, but if something came up and I was extremely busy or out of town or something, 
maybe I went for two weeks. So instead of doing a 50, 60, 70% change, maybe I'll do a 20% water change. Then the following week, go ahead and do a bigger one. All right? Something to keep in mind if you're experiencing distress in those fish immediately following or within 24 hours of a water change, keep in mind you might have done, you might have uh, put them through a pH uh, shock, a pH shift, which can be very hard on a fish. All right? So those are, that's my, uh, my tip of the week. Hope it helps you with water changes. And I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream, 11 a.m. Central every Saturday, an hour of uh, talk about everything from filters to, to fish to food to everything with a great group of fish keepers. And if you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member of the Garage Gang. This is a garage. You can be a member of the Garage Gang and help support the channel by becoming a Patreon monthly supporter. The details are down, down below. Now, I have an entire playlist on just water changes. Check it out up here. And if you want to uh, be alerted to uh, upcoming videos, things of that nature, be sure to subscribe by hitting me in the mug down here and hit that notification bell and you're not gonna miss anything. All right, let me uh, get into this dirty task. Goodbye, my friends.